One of the most wonderful things in Apex is that there's such a high skill cap. It's not only about aim and positioning, there's the guns, the legends, and so many different mortar skills that play a massive role in well, how you play. You're not just limited to the same old, same old, and you can really find a playstyle that works and suits you, whether it's just try hard sweating, learning movement, or casual play. But no matter what you do, there's no doubt that Apex is a mortar skill intensive game, and those who do not practice these mortar skills will fall behind as time passes. And this is why today I'm going to explain not only how, but why it is so important that you take advantage of the new gun run game mode before it's too late. But if you want to improve faster and get more in-depth guides on how to do all of those more advanced motor skills, make sure to head over to the Game League website where I personally have made literally hundreds of guides to help you improve faster. Guides covering fundamentals, advanced movement techniques, advanced legend tutorials, gameplay breakdowns, legend abilities, legend strategies, and so much more. We spend a lot of time and do our best to give full analytical breakdowns that will actually help you in whatever goal it is you have in the game. So if you actually want to learn faster and become insane at the game, I highly recommend you join the Game Lead family to get instant access to all of these in-depth guides by checking out the link in the description below. So why exactly is it so important that you really spend as much time as possible taking advantage of the new gun game mode or any time that we have respawn modes? Well. What is it that separates a person who does an activity as a hobby and a person who does it professionally? It's repetition. Generating errors and feedback loops is the key to succeed and this is the problem with Apex. While the game has a fast feedback loop, generally in terms of actual gameplay, the amount of errors you can generate within a game session is actually insanely low. It gets bogged up because you spend more time waiting for lobbies, character selecting and looting than you do actually fighting. My point is that the time to error generation ratio is terrible in Apex and even in Arena, it's difficult to practice concept based motor skills since the Arena is heavily reliant on a script format of poke poke push dead. Then you have to wait for the next round. For a game whose biggest highlight is its skill cap, the methods of practice are ironically dog water. This is why you need to take advantage of any time that we get a respawn mode such as control or gun game. Once it releases, you have two weeks to generate as many errors as you possibly can before it's back to the depression of trying to master movement in a mode where the error generation is basically non-existent. So here is how you need to approach this. First of all, you need to make sure you are focusing on the right things. And I'll tell you now, the best thing for you to spend your time on is movement. It doesn't have to be a 360 tap strafe wall bounce into a dolphin flip, but it can be something more simple, like just a normal wall bounce. However, the thing I'd recommend to you is to really put a ton of focus on your strafing. This is the number one time to improve your strafing and how your strafing affects your aim. So yes, while I do recommend working on more advanced movement tech like wall bounces and whatnot, if you feel like you are losing 1v1s because you keep getting beamed, then strafing and your aim while strafing should be your number one focus hands down. You can try focusing solely on your aim as well, but that seems to be better suited for control since you can actually choose weapons that will, will complement what exactly you're trying to practice. While in gun game, well, you're just kind of stuck with whatever you get. But if you're confident in that department, then I'd say work on more advanced movement. Don't worry about positioning too much because that is something you will always be doing in any game mode. Of course, you still have to do the basics, but take this time to really, really focus on motor skills, okay? And I recommend you pick one thing and practice it to death until you're absolutely sick of it and don't want to do it anymore, then keep doing it. Remind yourself that when you start getting frustrated, that is a sign a neuroplasticity is occurring, so that means you're going to learn faster which is why I'd say to focus on one mechanic during the whole time it's out. Don't be afraid to get in there and start getting destroyed to generate those errors, which actually leads me to my next point. Don't play to win. And I'll repeat this again. Do not play to win. If your goal is to improve at Apex, then you need to make sure you are taking this opportunity to do so. And I promise if you are focusing on winning, you are not taking advantage of this opportunity because when you focus on winning, that means you are playing in a way that is optimal and playing optimal does not generate errors. And a good way to tell if you are focusing too much on winning is if you are getting tilted with each engagement because you died or didn't get the kill. The only thing that should be frustrating you in any way is if you did not get a good rep in. Even then, remember that when you are getting frustrated, the neuroplasticity is kicking in, baby. Run in, get your repetition, get marked, respawn, then rinse and repeat. Yes, you will be thrown in the game. That will probably make people angry. So what? They have their goal to win, which is fine. They can spend their time on that all they want but you have your goal to improve and you need to make sure your time is well spent doing so. Don't waste your time for some goal of a stranger on the internet who's probably gonna call you a bot or trash for throwing anyway. Focus on you so that you can reach your own goals. Now, I know I said not to worry too much about focusing on positioning specifically, 
But keep in mind that due to the nature of having multiple enemies surrounding you in a small space, you have to be careful about only just running in and dying. Remember, you still have to get that repetition in before you die. This is going to be somewhat harder to do depending on what you're trying to practice. So try to approach it a little slower by looking for the perfect opportunities to execute whatever you are trying to practice. If you are trying to limit your fights to close quarters, then you're probably going to want to move around buildings and hang around inside of them. If you're trying to practice something more like advanced movements, then the outside or the tops of buildings might be more viable depending on the tech just because it gives you a little more space to breathe and to deal with the velocity changes. And I will point out as well, if you keep dying, try to slow it down. I know I basically told you to just run in their guns a blazing earlier, but it's pointless if you aren't actually getting the physical reps in. If you notice you just keep dying over and over, just move in more cautiously and you can even try working your way outside in or just hanging around your teammates more and playing off of them because, well, they're likely to find fights and well, you can just kind of butt in and create a situation where you can do whatever it is you're trying to practice. And as I said, working your way from the outside in is a great way to approach it because most players won't be hanging around the outer portion of the map. So these will generally be safer areas to travel through to get closer to enemies or they may spawn in the outer areas of the map. So you might get lucky and just walk up on them while they're spawning. Finally, something to really keep in mind is that there will be rounds where you have a very difficult time getting in repetitions. You might have a ton of sweats in your lobby, which can make it very difficult, or you may still just be warming up. The thing is to not let yourself tilt because of it. Remember that it is a part of the process because a large part of practicing motor techniques is actually setting up or finding the opportunities to do so. This means your approach will change based on the lobby and whether or not your current brain power is over level 9000. So if you notice that one or two players are really sweaty, doing crazy strafes or with really good positioning, or if you're just feeling a little slow at the moment, then you will need to slow down and look more carefully for those repetition opportunities. However, if you notice many of the players seem to be uh, not necessarily the best, or if you're just injected G fuel into your spinal cord, then you have a lot more leeway to play faster or sloppier just to get in more repetition. So in the end, you want to try recognizing what is required for you to pull off a good repetition, then manipulate situations with sole purpose of getting a successful repetition, even if it costs your life, but only costing your life if you get that repetition or an error revolving around it. So if you are trying to practice zipline movement, then on fragment, you will want to try drawing players into chasing you into the zipline building or give them control of the building, then play on the zips, even though if it's in their control, you are more likely to die. If you need to practice wall jumps, then poking and playing outside the buildings is more likely to create those opportunities for you to do so. Like with anything in life, if you create the environment to be more accessible for your practice, it becomes so much easier to successfully do so. This has been Johnny. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.